you. Okay. Luck, guys. Thank you. Start now. So, are we live? We're live. So, welcome everybody back to Friends of Tracking. Uh, I just wanted to actually first in this time, uh, in case you don't know what tracking data is, which is what we're looking at, tracking data is just data which tells you where all the players are on the field at uh, all the different times actually. Uh, and so today we're very excited that we have, so we have both um, two of our founding members. So we have uh, David Sumter and uh, Suds. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and, and Saj just won the, what the MIT Sloan paper contest. So that's exciting. Um, and, but our, our, our special guest of the day. Um, so we have, uh, Bruno of Metrica Sport and I'll let him tell you more about who he is and everything. But if you have been playing with tracking data, you've most likely played with Metrica Sport tracking data, because this is really the data that's been, um, out there. So it's very exciting to, uh, well, to see him again, because he actually spoke <laughs> recently in a seminar I organized. Um, so does everybody want to go through and introduce themselves? David? Yeah, well, I'll start. I'm David. I'm often here doing these things. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, so that's, uh, as Captain said, uh, getting back on the horse of uh, these weekly videos um, from Benfica. And yeah, it's nice to be back. All right. And, and I'm Bruno. I have an intro actually in the presentation. So shall we go to the presentation already? And then I kind of uh, introduce myself there. Perfect. And actually, I knew that because I've seen you present before, which exactly, is why I exactly, give a exactly. full introduction. Don't, don't, let, don't let the people I recycle content. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've put you on mute for some reason here. I was trying yeah, yeah, to do fine, something fine, else. Fine, fine, All right, fine, fine. yeah, there, there you yeah. go. Good, good. I was just saying that it, everything is brand new content for this presentation. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share share my screen. Um, uh, one moment. Uh, there's some here. Share my screen. All right. Okay. There we go. So um, I'm going to talk. So today's kind of talk or webinar, seminar, whatever is, is going to be about data driven video analysis, um, about its past, present, and especially the future, which is, I think, what, or what I'm, I'm the most excited about. Uh, and I think this is kind of a topic that hasn't been covered that much here on the, on the Friends of Struck in a kind of videos in general. Um, it has been like bits here and there. But I think it's it's a use case of data analysis, which uh, is super useful, and I think it's going to be especially big in the future uh, to use kind of this data, uh, data tracking data or event data to powered data uh, video analysis. Sorry. So, um, but before I get to the really interesting part, I'm going to do uh, kind of the part of introducing myself. So, because maybe a lot of people watching don't know who I am or, uh, or what I do. Um, so, uh, my name is Bruno um, Dagnino. Uh, I, I'm originally from Argentina. Uh, and as my kind of master's in science, I studied physics. Um, and I kind of, I was curious about physics, so that's what I studied. Later on, I moved to the Netherlands to actually do a PhD in cognitive neuroscience. Um, so if there are any scientists out there looking into getting into data analytics or entrepreneurship in general, uh, let me know. Uh, I know what's, what it's like to go from science to uh, kind of get outside of academia. Uh, so if I can do anything to help there or advise you, let me know. Um, and in Amsterdam, while doing the PhD, I met Ruben and Enzo, who are the co-founders of Metric Sports. We're a lot of time, we spend a lot of time playing football. Uh, that's actually how we got to know each other, and of all those conversations, Metrica Sports was born. Um, which, like as you can imagine by now, it's some, somewhere in the combination of science and, and, and uh, football and, of course, video analysis, because that's what we're going to talk about. And so it's actually a, a video producer, but that's kind of the, the, the video part of the team. Um, so I'm going to talk just a bit about Metrica Sports so that people know what we do and, in a way, kind of 
uh, gives a bit of context uh, about um, the things I'm going to talk about, and hopefully gives some me some kind of kind of uh, um, reason to be here speaking today. And um, so, what we do at Metrica is provide data and video analysis platform for sports, mostly in soccer, but they they are valid for any sports. Uh, and that's what we do. And really important as well is the reason why we do it. And we do it be, because we want to provide the best in class solutions, uh, performance analysis tools uh, at all levels of the game, not only for the lead clubs, uh, not only for the champions of the Champions League or, or the big leagues around the world, but also uh, to the amateur teams, to the Sunday League players, uh, to the grassroots teams of the world as well. And that's for us, it's really important. It's a really important part of everything we do at Metricum. Um, we have, I think this is a bit outdated, we have more than 120, I think now, clients all around the world. Uh, we have teams in the third division in Germany, but also we have uh, or fourth division in England, I think, but we also have teams in uh, South America, in Africa, in uh, China, in the US. We have a couple of big names. We have Seattle Saunders, which is kind of this amazing t-shirt that Bobby gave me. Uh, Ajax, Borussia Dortmund, Barcelona, um, Milan. Uh, so we really work across the whole spectrum from really elite clubs uh, to kind of um, clubs at all levels of the game. Uh, and like I said, for us, it's really important that everyone can use uh, our software. So we also have a free version, which is used by more than 10,000 people all around the world. So hopefully one day this map will be as green as this one. Uh, with kind of these are the customers that actually pay money for it. But we're very happy to have these many free users all around the world. And we have like really great and amazing feedback. And we know that we enable a lot of teams to actually really improve their performance or step up their game. And we are really proud of that. Um, uh, so even if you have zero budget, you can get started. And it's exactly the same software, of course, different functionalities or different versions of the same functionality, but it's exactly the same software that kind of elite clubs use uh, that you can use for free. All right, so that's enough with the pitch uh, and introduction. I'm going to now talk about data-driven video analysis, as promised. Uh, and uh, one of the things that I'm sure, especially the people that have been in this for a really long time, um, so it, of course, it's not a really super well-defined concept, like what is data-driven video analysis? Uh, of course, you get an idea is to use data to uh, to analyze video or to do video analysis at, at the at the performance analysis level. Um, but for a lot of people, that especially for the people that have been in this kind of um, uh, in soccer analytics for a while, this is what comes to mind when they think about data data driven video analytics. It's like, oh, here we go again, another talk about how to use data for video analysis, kind of that never actually. Uh, gets in the mainstream because I don't think what we are going to talk today is really mainstream yet. Um, and there have been a lot of talks in the past about how, yeah, you can use data to do video analysis eventually, but there are no actual real, real, really good ways to do it. So a lot of people think that kind of data video analysis is in a way it's an unfulfilled promise. It's something that, yeah, it, it would be amazing, but it kind of never gets really there and it never gets really started. Um, and hopefully I'm going to convince you today um, that it's actually a rocket that is about to lift off. It's true that there has been a lot of kind of innuendo with it. And yeah, it's, it's cool. Yeah, it's not cool. Yes, yeah, useful. Yes, yeah, not useful. Yes, yeah, useful, useful. But you need this, this and this and this to, to make it work, etc. And hopefully what I'm going to convince you today is that uh, there are a lot of things happening, different things in different areas of data and video analytics that they are all coming together. And this is really going to be a a rocket about to lift off. So hopefully by the end of the presentation, I can convince you of, uh, of this, All right? So before we get kind of into the details, I think it's important to kind of quickly go over the video analysis workflow because maybe a lot of people, especially if, if they're coming like purely from data analysis or they have never been involved in, in, in performance analysis, uh, it's not really clear what it means. Uh, and I try to summarize, of course, I'm not going to, I mean, it's not going to be a complete description of this. So I hope no one gets offended. Um, but uh, the main concept is that there is a, a person, it could be the coach, the video analyst, several video analysts, could be a, a position analyst, it could be someone that is doing scouting. 
that, ha that has a certain understanding of the game about the things that they want to look for when they analyze the game, um, the things that are important to them. Uh, for example, if you are, I don't know, if you are big on counterattacks, you are going to have a, a specific understanding of what the counterattack is and what your players should be doing during the counterattack. Right. So uh, based on that understanding of the game, what video analysts uh, do is they code the game, which is a bit of an unfortunate uh, um, word to be used in this context because it doesn't mean code like coding, like writing Python code, or, or uh, but it's coding the game means tagging the game, watching at the game, and pressing what is called code in a sports code or NAG or the video analysis software, even ours. Uh, to code, say, so, okay, here there was a counterattack, for instance, and you can say here there was a counterattack, and it was this type of counterattack, and it was on the left flank uh, of the on the left lane, um, and ended up with a cross, and it wasn't a goal. And you can like video analysts are really good at kind of, and the interfaces also they use are really good at being able to do that really fast and code every, all that all those details. Uh, so basically, they watch one game or many games or as many games as they want to watch. They code the different concepts and the different tags that they need for their, ana their analysis. And this takes quite a considerable amount of time to do. And they do that based on their, on their understanding of the game. Then after they have code everything, they go to the uh, analysis stage where they analyze what they have coded for and they go through the codes and they see, look for patterns and they think, see, okay, in this counter we did things right, in this counter we did things wrong. If I'm doing opposition, they have a look at kind of what the opposition um, is doing and they say, okay, look, these are all like five builds up from the position. So they play this way, etc. So they analyze it and they digest it. And then they prepare it and they prepare a playlist. Um, they try to annotate the right concepts to then share with the coach or directly with the players or the or with the head of scouting or with the um, uh, general manager of, of the team, etc. So to share with different stakeholders in the team. All right, so this is what they do. And as, as you've seen from what I described, it's a very manual work. It takes a lot of time it takes a lot, also a lot of knowledge and a lot of kind of understanding of how the game is played and what is important for your coach. And it involves like a lot of back and forth be, be, between the video analyst and the coach, et cetera, to really nail this understanding of the game. And then they spend a lot of time manually coding, analyzing, and kind of prepare, preparing, right? So this is a quick overview of, of what video analysis is. So now I'm going to talk a bit about the, the past, uh, quote unquote. Um, and this is the past of data vi data-driven video analysis. It's not the past of video analysis. So please, no one get kind of offended because I'm saying they are the past. But this is how data-driven data video analysis was done in the past. And, and it's a bit of what I just described, a lot of manual coding, which in the end is data. It's you kind of press all these codes and all these tags and what you're left off is with the data set of the game you coded. Uh, there have been also some companies that do third-party coding. So you send your videos to a company and they kind of send you back the code that they did of the game with some kind of basic concepts. And then of course there are basic events uh, like set pieces, shots, etc., that can be used. So basically after you have this data, either because you coded yourself or someone else did it, or because you, you get the data from a, a data provider, you can go and use this data to filter your clips and then kind of analyze and then present. And that is, it is in a way data driven because one, or it's data based at least, because once you have the data, you use it to kind of analyze the game and then present. Uh, but this, it has been clear already for a long time. And this is what I said, what I meant about the unfulfilled promise that this is kind of, that there is much that can be done in this area. And one thing I wanted to share is this video. So this is the, this is how Metrica Sports got started. This is the first game we analyzed uh, or tracked. Uh, and I think it's also, I always like to show this video because of how crappy it is and how kind of like uh, uh, um, manual everything was. Uh, and hopefully it will inspire, if you are starting your own company or your own project, like things are super crappy in, in, in the beginning, kind of don't give up, just pull through. Um, and this is kind of the first game we recorded. I, I'm actually the goalkeeper here. It's a five aside between friends. And we had this clip to show teams we were starting to talk to or coaches we were starting to talk to about like this video, we showed this video only to show them that we could actually track the players so that they would believe us and that the data was not kind of like done by hand, but that we could actually track the game. And that's the reason we showed this, this video. Uh, but we were really surprised that we got very consistent feedback. Uh, we, we didn't speak to that many. We didn't know that many coaches back then. There were two, but the two of them got very consistent feedback. Uh, and it was, oh yeah, this is super cool, but 
they were they were surprised like my kind of scientist brain or engineering brain was that we could track the players they were super excited that you could show things on the video uh that you could show this cross on the video because all the data providers till then all the platforms you had the two-dimensional field here and then the video here and they got super excited oh can you show me for example the distance between these two players here on the video because i want to see that uh, and uh, other thing they said both of them as well is if you could for example automatically automatically detect because in this goal i think um uh there is this player that makes a pass and then runs deep i think um uh yeah, it's going to start running. So if you could detect every time that happens automatically from the data, that would be super interesting. Yeah, he starts running there. So uh, it would be good if we could detect because all this, all this, of course, not moments exactly this moment, but moments like this, we have to detect manually. So, and this was already in 2014 and the concepts of video analysis and automatic detection were very present. And this came from coaches themselves that told us what they were looking for. Uh, so th this is what I mean, it's kind of an unfulfilled promise because this was already 2014 and people were already, already talking about this. But this actually kind of guided the whole history of Metrica about like combining data and video in trying of useful and meaningful ways. ways. So of course the next, that takes us to the present where a lot of these things had been applied already. Uh, and there has been a lot of movement, a lot of kind of uh, progress at the level of the community, at the level of the companies and at the level of the clubs as well. So at the level of the community, I think this is a really good example. Um, this is a GIF, so oops, so I can't pause it. Please don't get too distracted by the GIF playing. By this was done in a combination between Joe Mulberry and Kuhn Fossen. And this is a similarity search engine. Uh, I think it's called C yeah, C2 search, I think it's called. Uh, you select one moment of the game and then click on five situations and it finds situations similar to that one you selected. And then it's also, there was a nice implementation of this by Karun Singh in the last year of the uh, Pro Forum. Uh, I think on the last conference, Stats one mentioned they are gonna, they're working on something similar as well. So it's really, not, it's nothing really advanced in terms of mathematics. It's actually uh, rather easy to implement. Uh, but this type of things has been already present for a while and people are working on it. And again, it shows the value. Of course, it's still not like, there's no like a super easy way to implement this at, at scale. Some, uh, some clubs are doing this and I'm going to get to that in, in a minute, but there's really, at this in the, at the present, like no one is doing this at scale. Um, <clears throat> at the level of the companies, also there's been a lot of work on advanced detection of relevant moments of the game. Uh, I think Stats Perform has their models kind of detects different phases of the game, which is a bit more advanced than just voice well, automatic, so that you need to do the manual coding. So uh, Second Spectrum as well, I know in the, in the platform has a lot of different filters that you can do based on things they compute automatically from the data. Uh, and we as well has, have been doing this already for quite a long time, since 2015 or 14 actually we do kind of uh, custom pattern detection. Uh, so we talk with coaches, we ask them what are the things they are, want to see. For example, every time they want to see every time the two fullbacks are on the last third of the field. So if they have the tracking data or if we provide them the tracking data and event data, we develop patterns uh, that detect those moments automatically. Uh, so then they can look, they don't need to code all of that manually. Uh, and again, this is not like rocket science. It's just like a lot of if and for and loops statements. So it's actually pretty boring uh, under the hood, uh, at least this original implementation. Uh, but it's really powerful in terms that it saves them really a lot of time. Uh, and this has already been, this is already present. This, these are services these companies offer. So it's already kind of um, progress in the direction of data-driven video analysis. Because uh, for example, in our case that we have these custom patterns so that they can detect all the moments of the game automatically that they want. Um, and they don't, so they don't need to code, or at least they don't need to code for that things. They code, code for other things, but for all the custom, custom patterns, they can just jump in the platform and start filtering without needing to code that. Um, so this is, starts to look a bit more like data-driven video analysis. Uh, and also, uh, this is happening at the clubs level. Um, I know, so I'm not going to go into the details of what club, uh, what uh, every club is doing. Um, but I, I know that, that Barcelona are working on using data, kind of modeling their gameplay. Uh, 
and then using data to detect what, when they are doing what they're supposed to do, when they're not doing what they're supposed to do to evaluate uh, passes opportunities. I think the same is going, going, on, going, on, uh, going on at Ajax. I think at Hammerby, David, you're also kind of doing something similar. I suspect Sats is also doing something like this. I would have included the Benfica logo if I uh, knew in advance that, that you were joining. Uh, sorry, Sats. Um, but basically, this is becoming kind of pre-standard at all the big clubs, all the clubs that have a data analysis department or that they have um, uh, yeah, data scientists within their team. They are doing some kind of work or at least exploring doing this type of work. Uh, um, so whenever something happens at the top, it's always interesting to look at that uh, and see kind of how you can take that to the whole rest of the of the ecosystem. Um, but again, this is already kind of in, at the present. There are a lot of there are a lot of clubs already doing this type of analysis using data to kind of cut clips to identify opportunities to then kind of combine that with video to share with the coach or to share with the players as well. Um, again, it's not mainstream, so it's still a little bit of an unfulfilled promise because not everyone is doing it and you need a lot of resources to do it, but we are getting there. Um, so getting there means that um, there could be kind of a new data-driven video analysis. I abbreviated it because it was too long. It's, it's a mouthful, but data-driven video analysis workflow. Uh, or, uh, this is the promise of, right? So that you would have in combination, of course, these things never kind of replace each other because you need of both of them to really interact uh, to really make the best out of it. But the same way you had kind of a, a person or a human being with an understanding of the game that codes, analyze and prepare the game, you could have a kind of a model of the game, a, a computer model of the game uh, that could, you could then run these models on each game to infer kind of the, uh, basically means asking the models, what do you think of this game? And the model gives you the answer, then it gives you insight saying, okay, I have all these different moments when this happened. And I think you should pay attention to this specific clip or to this, this specific set of situations. And then also to automate a lot of the work that they need to do also to prepare these clips to kind of add the annotations or the highlights or add the text and the video so that the coaches know what to, uh, what to, um, what to look for. Um, so this is at least a promise, and uh, right that there could be this new kind of workflow um, again. That is really a synergy between the two. It's not one replacement or the other, but it's really a synergy, a synergy between the two. But again, this doesn't really happen yet at the at scale, right? Um, it's not that something that everyone is doing, and even at the top level, some only some clubs are doing it, and probably only some of them are doing it right or efficiently or in a way that is actually useful for them, and they are probably struggling still kind of finding the best way to do it um and a bit the question that I, that i want to answer now in this kind of second part of the of the talk is why didn't this happen yet kind of why it's not mainstream or what is not like more widely adopted uh and i think there are kind of four limitations or, or, or uh to this becoming like really like this rocket lifting off or this becoming more mainstream uh, one is the club's disposition to it, where the clubs think this is interesting uh, and whether they want to invest in this and whether they see value in it. Another one is data availability, where the clubs or uh, uh, at all levels of the game can actually get access to the data they need to do this kind of data-driven analysis workflows. Another one is uh, that there haven't, has, haven't really been really good platforms and tools to make this easy and fast uh, and efficient. Uh, so that not everyone has to reinvent the wheel. Because if you look at all these kind of five clubs or 10 clubs or 20 clubs in the world that are doing this, they're probably everyone, each one of them developing their own tools because there's kind of nothing so mainstream. Uh, so it takes a lot of uh, investment. And there's also like, you, uh, you need a lot of skills because you need to know about data and video analysis and how to connect the data with the video and to do a dashboard and where to store the videos and where to store the data, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're one of these clubs that you want to really get going on this, you need a lot of investment. Um, and of course, what I'm going to say now is that all these things are changing, of course, because otherwise uh, it would be a pretty sad end to the presentation. Um, so I'm first going to go to the club's disposition. I'm not going to say too much because I talk about elite clubs doing it. Um, what I'm going to say is just a concept that this area is following the steps of data usage in recruitment. Um, and if you have been following this field, for example, I know that this 
last of uh, these first months of 2020 have been crazy with clubs like hiring data scientists and uh, like left and right. Um, but this is kind of didn't happen a couple of years ago. Kind of a couple of years ago, the usage of data in recruitment was like, yeah, well, some clubs are doing it, some clubs are doing it right. The ones that are doing it right are taking advantage of it. But there wasn't really this feeling in general at all the clubs in the ecosystem, this feeling that you, if you want to kind of be, uh, if you want to be at the, if you want to be able to compete in the next couple of years, you need to get uh, data into your recruitment recruitment uh, process. Uh, and now, so that was a kind of that change. And now I think more and more and more and more clubs are realizing this and more and more clubs are hiring data scientists and they're fighting for them and they compete to, to who hires the one with the highest degree, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, and the only thing I'm going to say about this is that I know that the lead clubs are doing data driven video analysis. And if they are doing it, it means that in a couple of years, everyone else is going to be doing it and everyone else is going to be kind of fighting for the best data driven video analysis as well. Um, so that, that is changing. I think that of course you might not really see it yet, but I know because I'm, I'm on the field, I know how, what clubs are working on and I can tell you that is going to change. The other thing is data availability, uh, because uh, like in the one year ago or yeah, one year ago, I would say like the only way to really have the data you needed to do this type of more complex data video uh, video analysis, data driven video analysis was to have tracking data or event data. Um, and the event data didn't have any information about the, the players, other players or, or of the team. So if you wanted to do it right, you needed to have tracking data as well. And tracking data was super expensive. Um, uh, it still is in, in a lot of ways, um, but there, I think there are two big changes that happened in the last couple of months. One is the release of Statsform 360, uh, which I, probably a lot of people are aware of, but the ones that aren't is in kind of uh, event data 2.0 or 3.0 or um, I don't know, something point oh. But basically you have the event, for example, Normally, you traditionally you have only the event of the past that the past went from here to here and from this player to this player, and you knew where this player was only because you knew where he received the pass. But what a stats bomb includes now is at the moment of every pass the position of all the players, uh, without identities, but the position is already a lot if you want to do tactical analysis. Uh, so a lot of things that you couldn't do before uh, with just uh, again quote unquote just event data, you can do now. Uh, and that is super exciting. Um, and I think more and more people are using Statsform data nowadays. So this is going to be in the hands of a, really a lot, a lot of people in the in the near future. Um, and the other one is, uh, this is a service we offer, uh, which is called automated tracking data. So you can upload any video you have to our cloud platform. And what our engine will return you is what you see on the top right, which is the tracking data for both teams. Again, no identities. Uh, so these are kind of generic identities and they can change from player to player, but you know at every moment of the game where all the players of each team are standing and where the ball is. So, uh, and this is way more affordable, it's 10 times more affordable than that standard tracking data. Uh, and this, if, of course, if you want to do like physical analysis of specific player, you can do that with this. But if you want to do tactical analysis and if you want to look at kind of, um, um, yeah, uh, lines being break by a pass, or you want to be able to compute pitch control and include velocity in your pitch control calculations. Um, you want to do advanced expected possession value models, etc. A lot of that can be done with this data, which is much more affordable uh, than before. So this means that clubs that before couldn't afford tracking data now are able to afford this, and they can uh, start to do this much more advanced kind of analytics at the level that wasn't possible before. Uh, uh, one thing I, I wanted to show as well, I think I, if I have it here, is that this works also on broadcast, but a, a video. But what I'm really more more excited is that it works also at this kind of amateur level, which really means that really anyone will be able to do this some kind of analysis like the elite clubs, only the elite clubs can do nowadays. So uh, yeah, that covers data availability. Basically, a lot of information, a lot of data that wasn't available till like six months ago, now is much more available to. A, like why like um wider range of people be it through the Stadium 360 data or be it to our automatic tracking data um 
is basically much affordable, much more affordable and available than before. Um, so I'm wondering, Bruno, would you prefer yeah. if we asked, and I didn't ask this between the previous sections, but would you prefer if we asked questions between the sections or that we waited till the end? Uh, as, you, as you prefer, for me it's the same. Because um, it might actually I, be good to insert a few if you would, wouldn't mind. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, um, and one of them I think that you, you just somewhat addressed that there's a question of, and I had a question of this kind of too, of what level of cameras would you need in order to actually be able to get tracking data? Um, anyone, it depends. Now, now, before in the past, it was really obvious because there was only one type of tracking data. Uh, so basically, if you want to have tracking data, you need to have cameras in the stadium that were HD, that were at least a set of three cameras, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and you can go all the way up to 18 cameras installed in the stadium for a fully automated workflow. Um, but nowadays that there are different types of tracking data available. I think you can get it from any, like any decent camera at a more or less decent height. You can already get some kind of uh, data. Of course, you're, gonna, you're not gonna get like super high accuracy data uh, if, you, if you're just like filming it from the, from the side of the field, but you are gonna get some type of data that you can use already. And I think that that changed a lot. So for the more advanced solutions, you need a lot of cameras in the stadium, um, uh, but you can get also really high accuracy data now from a broadcast feed or from a tactical camera that, that one, someone, because in the past you need a lot of cameras to know the pitch calibration, right? So to know, to know this, to know how the, where the lines were to be able to convert from here to here, you need this uh, setup of cameras installed at the stadium but with computer vision that can be done from the video itself. So basically any video footage, any decent video footage is useful. Wow. So I, I'm actually, there's another one I was kind of curious about. Um, do you get people asking for like orientations of players or something like this? This came up last week. And so to kind of bring another question over um, is, do you, do you get people asking if they can give you the player orientations? Um, uh, not at the professional level, but uh, we do a lot at the academic level because I think they are kind of uh, want to have as much information possible to do as much advanced research as they can. Uh, but uh, not at the professional level, at, at least not yet. I think that's going to come eventually. Uh, I think there's really good research uh, by Andreu. Uh, I forgot his name. I think he worked at the University of Barcelona in collaboration with, with, with uh, the Barcelona, the club. And he did really good research. I can, I can link later in the comment of the video to his research because I think he has quite uh, quite some interesting results. Not, uh, not using orientation, but like getting the orientation from the video. And I'm pretty sure that eventually will be part of all, of all the data, uh, what all the data providers provide as well. There was a yeah. question here also, which might be good to take just now. That can you do this in real time? The things you're showing just now from the video, or is it yeah. take some time afterwards? Yeah, not not you, you uh, not in our platform. So we have it set it up. It's a kind of like offline thing. You record a video, you upload it, gets processed. Mm -hmm. But there's no technical limitation on, on doing this in real time. For us, it so just you can do it in no sort of real case. time with the video in front of you, or you can do it very quickly on the video. It takes yeah. less than the time to watch the video to do it. Yeah. Well, with these things, it's always like how much uh, how big of a computer you have, uh, yeah. how much how much you want to parallelize it, how much you are willing to pay for that like immediate results yeah. uh, but technically there's there's no um, limitation so we we haven't done it because to be honest we never really get a use case uh, clubs never really ask for it uh, it's always like yeah that would, could be cool but then they remember like how hectic much they are uh, kind of the moment of the game is and they're running from here to there and there's really not that much time to actually use this data in, in real time at least not yet Actually, there was another that kind of question that came up. Uh, well, so of course, recently there's um, all the talk about the fact that uh, De Bruyne used analytics in order to negotiate his contract. And you were talking about evaluating um, players. And do you see this becoming something that's common, particularly with things like tracking data that players are negotiating their contracts using analytics? Um, it, yeah, instead, <laughs> instead of agents, is, you know, the reverse side of teams using analytics for yeah. finding players. Um, yeah, I think with like with everything that comes from the media, I would like to know the real story behind it. <laughs> I doubt it. He kind of 
called like a data analysis company and told them, yeah, let me know what I should do. And then kind of went play PS4 and, and they said like, yeah, okay, I'm going to, if you say I stay, I'm staying, I'm staying. So of course, always with the media, they want to kind of make it clickbaity and, 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 you know, shiny. And, um, but I do think this is going to become, uh, I think it was great to see. Actually, I, I didn't expect it. I think it's great to see. And I think of course, once it's the same that we're talking about data driven video analysis, once someone starts doing it, everyone gets curious and everyone tries to do the same. And, uh, and I think it's really, I have to say, I never expected to, to I, I mean, there's a lot of always conversation about data being used for recruitment, uh, but I was surprised by a player using it to kind of negotiate his own kind of contract or decide what to do. I'm not really, really sure what the story was, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's gonna be more and more used. Uh, and especially as kind of the younger generations of players uh, start to kind of maybe in 20 years what now it's advanced it would be kind of really standard back then and, and the same way because we know clubs use tracking data to scout right and for example we have clients that send us videos and tell us i want to know the tracking data of this player on the second division in uruguay for instance so that then we can know what his speed is and what his physical performance is uh and the same way clubs use data to scout players, players gonna use data to to negotiate with clubs, which I think is pretty good, pretty cool. I guess there's one other question, and then unless, although I think that there's there's some in the the chat that I can leave uh, David uh, to look at, but the. Um, you, you mentioned that I, I just kind of wanted your uh, what you meant by something you said um, when we were looking at uh, the your original video and. Mm -hmm. Um, that you were looking at, like there were particular plays and people wanted to know, um, I got ink on my hand, sorry. There uh, were particular plays and people wanted to know, um, does this occur at other times? Um, and you said, um, nobody's really been uh, uh, doing this at scale. And it was, what, what aspect of things have you not seen as much of at scale? Um, but I think, I think it's a bit, like it's really what this whole presentation is about is that if you want to do that, uh, you need to um, uh, you need to have data available to do it. You need to have the someone with skills. You need to have the platform to actually make it work. You need to have the right tools. You need to have buy-in from the club, um, and that's the reason why it's not being done at scale. And basically, it's being done at some clubs that can afford it and th that they believe in this and, and they are investing in that. Um, and this is what I think is really gonna change in the next couple of years. So, which I think gives me the perfect kind of uh, intro onto the next uh, talking about tools and platforms. Because um, if, you, if you are, for example, are of the club, right? And you want to say, imagine you want to, uh, um, uh, let me see, I forgot what comes next. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah. So imagine you want, you're, an, you're at the club and you want to, you are a data scientist, right? And you say, you find on the data that there are a lot of moments in which, for example, there are passes into the box. We receive passes into the box from the exterior lanes that are really hurting us, right? And you find that from your kind of data analysis. Um, the steps you need to do to take that to the coach is uh, you have to kind of say, okay, uh, this is happening like more than more than compared to a benchmark or this has been started happening recently or after this, we always concede or half the ways we concede come from there, etc. So you do the math and the analysis, everything is fine there. I think there are a lot of ways to do that and it, that has been widely covered in this kind of uh, um, uh, series of friends of tracking. Um, but what do you do then? Because then you have to kind of look at... Um, ask for videos of, of those games you have the data for, look at those moments, kind of maybe talk to the video analyst because you're not really sure how to use the, the, the video analysis software, cut those clips, then the video analyst has to look at them, then they, you probably want to put like an arrow or a spotlight on the player that's gonna receive the ball, etc. So it's really, so what clubs are doing at the lead level are doing is they are kind of having this database linked with the videos and they are developing software or processes to cut the videos and export the clips and then some clubs even developing their own kind of uh, engine to plot overlays on the videos. Uh, but it's really kind of, well, you need to have exactly the things we we're saying, you need to be a big club with a big budget, you need to believe in that, you need to invest a lot of time, etc. And I think that is one of the big things that is changing. 
Um, and here I'm going to talk a bit about uh, metric sports and about our products. But I think this is changing in general, and we are not the only company that is going to be provide solutions for this. But um, uh, let's see how that workflow of identifying that there are passes into the box that are hurting us uh, could work in the in the future. Or th th you can actually do this now with our products. But I, I, this, I think, this is uh, the direction I, th I think uh, where I think think things are going. Uh, how would that look like with this kind of in the future of data data driven video analysis? For that, first I need to introduce kind of Play by Metric Sports. That's uh, one of our products. And Play basically is a software that it allows you to create this type of telestrated clips. Uh, now this player has been highlighted and there's going to be a run, um, a deep run. So you get the area highlighted with the future trajectory of this player and of this player. And now the video plays and then you get the two players running till there's a cross and there's a goal, right? And Play uh, is one of the products we offer and it allows you to do this kind of telestrated clips in a really easy way manually. So you go to say, okay, I want to, in this moment, I want to add uh, a spotlight here. Uh, I want to add a future trajectory and a future tra trajectory to this and this player. And you can create this kind of quite fast, but there has to be a human being kind of doing it. We solve a lot by doing the automatic detection of the field. So you have to calibrate it and doing the automatic detection of the players so that you don't have to keyframe them. And there is kind of some cool technology going on behind the hood, under the hood. Uh, but still, there is a human that needs to kind of um, uh, add those annotations manually. Um, and here is where, where code will enter. Code is an, is an Python package. It's open source. It's something we are developing at Metrica, but it's open source. Um, this is still like really early days of this package. So I'm not like advertising it like it's something like super finalized that you can just go and use without issues. Um, uh, but it's a uh, Python package for data-driven tactical and video analysis of soccer games. Um, so uh, let's say, for example, that um, you want to, uh, like I was saying, identify that there are current, there are situations where there are passes into the box that they are that are hurting our team. So what you what you would present as a video analyst, this is the end result. So you probably you look at a lot of clips you identified in your analysis, then you cut the clips of every time that happened, um, and then you probably kind of you if you do it, you can do this in a sports code at x y coordinates. So you added the x y coordinates of all the passes into the box. Uh, that were dangerous, and then you want to. Um, so th this this is play our platform. Uh, analysts in our platform can go there, select, and the 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 clip for that action is being played. And you'll see here now that that clip gets stopped automatically, paused for a bit, and there's an arrow showing like where the pass is going, and then the 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 game continues. So this is what would be kind of the end result that you would like to present as part of your analysis that identify their passes that are dangerous. You want to take it all the way to just giving the analyst clips where this situation happens and they're telestrated so that they can quickly understand what you want to show them. Right? And like I said, if you want to do that, uh, the standard way, the traditional way, it's a lot of manual work. And this is where kind of Codeball enters. Because in Codeball, it's a, like I said, it's a Python package. You can... Um, uh, load the tracking and event data. Uh, I'm going to talk at the end about how we do that a bit, but you can load tracking and event data. Never mind all this boilerplate. The magic happens here in this passes into the box section. Um, so you have a game data set that has events. So in Codeball allows you to really easily say, okay, I want the event type pass. So this already filters only the passes. You say, I want to look the passes into uh, the a certain zone, and this is zone opponent box. Well, this is an I, actually I mixed this up. So it's an suppose you want to do an analysis on the passes you give that are dangerous, not the ones you received. I mixed that one, but basically you say into zone opponent box. So this filters the events as well uh, of all the passes, only the passes that went into the opponent box, and then that the result is complete, right? Uh, and you have have this really nice way of kind of querying the data with really kind of in a natural way and you have different zones defined like half spaces or zone 14, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the last third, first third, like on half, attacking half, et cetera, so that you can filter to the data. So with all just this kind of one line of code, actually you get all the passes into the box in a data frame in Pandas. So that's already pretty cool. 
Um, and the other thing that is pretty cool is that then you can iterate over the events. Uh, uh, and you call this method build pattern event. Oops. Sorry. Uh, up. Where do you work? Up oh, here. Um, you run through all the events, and for each event, you create a pattern event, and then you said, I want to add an arrow, uh, and I want to add a pause for two seconds. All right. And then you kind of return the pattern event, and then you save all these events. And this code, what it returns is what you see here on the right. So this is a an event or a pattern that has a start time and an end time. It has coordinates for the arrow uh, that are the coordinates of the pass, basically. And then you said, I also want to add a visualization that starts at this time, ends at this time. It's a tool arrow, and it goes from where the pass starts, where the pass ends. Um, and I want that to be pinned so that the arrow stays there. Uh, and then I also want to add a pass, right? So kind of it. It uh, defines one of the events that you just saw in a JSON file, right? And then you can get this JSON file and import it in Mertica Play so that what you just saw here gets uh, every event automatically get a, gets a pause on the events and it gets an arrow draw from where the pass started, where the pass ended, and then it passes for two seconds and the video resumes. Uh, and any visualizations you use in Mertica Play, you can define them in this way through this JSON file. So this is another example uh of uh set pieces so you can say in, in all set pieces i want to put a spotlight on the player that is taking the set piece so this is kind of right i mean it looks simple but if you're a video analyst looking at a lot of set pieces it saves you a lot of time to know where to look for and not just to okay where the ball is what's going on ah, okay here's what i need to look at um and this is another example uh which is uh uh to add uh, the length of the team automatically as well. So you can look at uh, the performance of your team. You can look at when my team is stretched more than a certain distance, for example, and whenever the team is stretched more than 35 meters, I want to create events uh, out of those moments. And I want to add uh, a length annotation also so that the video analyst can have a look or the coach can look and say, oh, look, it's, it's like really 37 meters, for instance that's a lot or that's not a lot or maybe this clip is fine, I go to the next one. But it's already fully annotated uh, when the analyst gets to see it, right? And these are just three examples, but like I said, any visualization you have in Metrica Play, you can use it, you can program it uh, via the JSON file and we have this open source library to help you do it. Um, it could be future trajectories, past trajectories of players. You can pin areas on the field and have the area there. Like the first clip I showed you in the beginning, with the future trajectories and the shape, all that you can do uh, from Codewell as well and through the JSON file import into Magic Play. Um, and uh, this is just one comment I want to mention that all the reading of, of the data being done in Codewell is done using Cloppy, which is also an open source library that Kuhn Fossen started and I helped maintain, uh, which is a, a library for standardizing soccer tracking and event data. Um, so, and basically you can read uh, a lot of different, not all of the providers, not all of the formats yet, but quite a bit of them. So you don't have to need, you don't need to think about kind of loading the data in or uh, structuring the data, creating metadata files, everything is taken care of for you. And uh, now we are working also on normalizing the data so that all the data, it doesn't matter from which provider it comes, they all go to the same coordinate system. So that you also don't need to think about that. Uh, and Codewell is really based and inspired by the club in a lot of ways. Uh, basically, I look at everything that Kun does in the code and I like about best practices and I copy it to my own repository because I, I'm not actually that good at Python uh, and he's really good at it. So I, I just copy all the, all the, if you see my repositories are, are all like typed uh, and that's because Kun did it and then I copy it and that's it. So thank you also for that. Um, Okay, but this is also a tool, like if you don't want to use Codeball, if you don't want to use Play, whatever, Club is already a library that lets you read any tracking data or any event data and gives you a data frame that is really easy to operate on so that it also lowers the skills needed to, to get started. So basically what I want to wrap up now is there are a lot of tools and platforms. I, here I presented what I'm super excited about to use, that is to use tracking and event data from different providers via Codeball to be able to import it into Magica Play. Uh, but there are probably 
many others. I, I'm not aware of any other platform that allows you to do that just yet, but I'm sure they're gonna come. Uh, the same way a lot of companies copy play when uh, we started, I'm, gonna sh I'm pretty sure they're gonna copy this as well. Uh, but at the moment, this is the only platform that I know that allows you to do that. And this takes me to the last point, which is the skills required. And as you can see now, you have a lot of tools where you can do the full workflow of the data-driven video analysis without actually need, needing to develop that much infrastructure yourself or needing to know that much how to code or how to handle video, how to handle data. For example, let's say you want to, uh, you have the stats from 360 data. Uh, you can look at, uh, at the expected goals of different shots. Uh, and you can find moments in, in which it was better to make a pass rather than shoot, right? And this is something that anyone that has been following along the, the, the Friends of Tracking uh, series can at least have an idea of on how to do this, even though it might not be the best way to go about it, but you can look at shots and say, okay, in this shot, given this expected, va expected uh, goal value, I think it was better to give a pass. Uh, but normally it would stop there. I have no idea how to do that, Bruno. I have no idea how to do that. I've been well, doing these trains of tracking videos for a long time. If you can <laughs> actually explain, somebody can, maybe someone's been inspired by the videos and done that, but I'm not sure anybody really knows how to do that. But anyway, sorry. Okay, I can, I, I, I can give I can give like one way you can do it, right? To, <laughs> it's, to, one, it's, quite one, a hard, really, it's quite a hard question to get right. But I, I know yeah, exactly. It's like, that's, that's what I mean. If you really want to go to the details of it and exactly what methodology you should use and wh why each methodology has a bit of uh, um, uh, um, the, 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 the strengths and weakness of each approach, et cetera, et cetera, it can get pretty difficult and pretty detailed. But you can, like, you can do a very basic one, which is look at if whenever the shot was taken, there was someone positioned at the position with a better expected goal value. And you can say, okay, well, it was better to pass the ball to that guy. Like most, most basic, of course, uh, Twitter can burn me on fire uh, for just making it that simple. Uh, but, and I know it's not that simple. And of course you have to consider for a lot of other different things, et cetera, et cetera. But um, it could be like a really easy way to get started and to get the conversation going at your club about, oops, sorry, about expected values, uh, expected goals, values, and et cetera. And, that's the thing before it was like, yeah, I think we are not, you know, we are, we are taking too, too much shots. We are not making enough passes uh, or not taking advantage of opportunities. And people say like, well, but when and how exactly, and what, what was the context, what was going on? Um, now what I think really changed is that you can very easily using Codal, for instance, output events, uh, the same events you get from your, from your file, uh, output events with a ring on the player about to shoot and a spotlight on the pass option, right? Uh, and then you can share that with your video analysis. Like, okay, here are all the chances, look at them. I already wish, uh, kind of telestrated them for you. It's just, it's gonna take you 10 minutes, go through this, let me know what you think, and we can iterate and kind of make my approach better, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, oh. and can, can I now interrupt this? Yeah. It's something that's very kind of related to this. Um, so you said you could do a comparison of, oh, um, you know, d does this player or another player have um, a better shot at, at success in shooting, um, but are there, you know, good probabilities for how safe it is uh, to pass the ball from one player to another, depending on the situation? Does anybody? Well, you know? could you could use you could use again like a like um I mean like everything I think it's always better to get get started easy and then iterate from that, but you could just get any model of pitch control and multiply, find find like whatever you think is a good way to multiply uh, expected goals by pitch control at that particular location. And it will tell you kind of, and then it will give you, give you some idea of whether that was a, a doable pass or not. Uh, uh, and it could be one way to approach it. But I, I think you know, this, we could actually have a whole friends of tracking on this yeah. very problem <laughs> very because I mean, you, of course you can do pitch control and you can do various things like that. But what we we found when we've used tracking data is that just on the 125th of a section second, which we have the 20. Uh, the, so there's even there, the 125th of a second, if you take a one second interval, you've got 25 different situations there. Some way you should have passed, some way you should have shot. Yeah. yeah and yeah. <laughs> we're working that out. And then, and then, you know, as soon as you show it to a player, you know that you've just got it all wrong because like uh, he or she is not going to accept uh, your analysis and which they will pick another 25 of a second where they shouldn't yeah. have passed and, and so on. 
I, yeah, I, yeah I, 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 I can't imagine how difficult it, it's to actually be on the ground doing this. Um, yeah. I think the fact that we were just discussing before about players being actually more data aware or data savvy will mm -hmm. help also a bit. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I can't imagine how actually difficult it is to. I'm I'm looking more towards the the kind of the future maybe where where kind of a lot of these things are more worked out as well. Mm -hmm. And I think like uh, is one thing is to do at the level you probably you do it at Hammerby with that level of of um, uh, kind of um, refinance or that level of detail that level of. Um, which probably also it's what's expected of at that level of the game, but there are also kind of easy ways to start gaining. Because one thing is, I think this, this needs to start gaining momentum. And I think it's, it's, it's also could be a whole other Friends of Tracking session about uh, how to get buy in inside a club. Uh, and what I like about this and about the, because in the end, it's always about that. Like you can do the fanciest analysis in the world. If the club doesn't, or the coach or the players don't buy it, then it's useless. And you can do the most basic one even wrong uh, and even kind of with a lot of, but if the players and the coach are really into it, it's probably have a much big, it's going to have a big, much bigger impact. So I think going again, back to how to get buy in, I think this type of approach where you do the analysis, but also show what you are, what you are looking at in a, uh, and put that possibility because if you meet at the coach and the video analyst, if you're a data scientist and you meet at the coach and the video analyst on the video, which is what they are used to work with, I think you have a much better chance to get in by in or getting a conversation going or get into this type of discussions. Yeah, sure. But here, look at the body, how it was oriented. Okay, well, I need to compensate for that or I would make, you know, a, a different analysis, etc. So I think this possibility of really easy uh, going from analysis to video, uh, even telestrated, I think it's gonna have a much, it's, it's, it's gonna make, make it much easier for data scientists and data analysts and data analysis departments to get buy-in from the coach and the video analysts as well. Uh, but yeah, I know it's way more, I mean, you, can, you, can, you can, it's this type of conversation that you can actually talk two seconds or five hours. There's no kind of, a, there's, no, uh, there's no in between. All right, so, um, so that's uh, almost a wrap up. Um, Hopefully, so hopefully I kind of convince you or show you or at least make you hopeful that all these limitations are now becoming opportunities and that this kind of data, because now clubs are going to start looking into it. There is much more data and a much more rich the type of data that there is available than before. There are many tools and platforms that make it super easy and you can get started um, well, knowing very little or with very, very little investment, especially if you're a club, you don't need to invest that much in this. You can explore and you can play around. And if you are a, a someone looking for a job, you can also, or like that want to get into the field, you can also get started pretty, pretty easily. Um, and what I'm super excited to share today is that, uh, um, yeah, wait, this one is the one I'm super excited to share about, is that um, uh, you can uh, do, no, sorry, I, f I forgot this one. Yeah, sorry, this one goes first. La last minute changes. So yeah, like I said, I think data-driven video analysis is a rocket that is about to lift off. Uh, we are one of the launch pads that are hopefully gonna make that happen or are helping make that happen. But like I said, this is not about metric. I think, I truly think this data-driven video analysis is gonna have a bigger and bigger role in the future. Uh, yeah, and we are one of the ways you can do that. Um, and now to this one, which is the really good news. And what I'm really excited to share is that you can try this out yourself today. Um, today we are releasing a third sample game. So for the ones that don't know, we released two tracking and event uh, games in the past, the Metrica sample data. Uh, now we, today we are releasing a third one, which is tracking events and video all in sync and all compatible with Codeball and Play so that you can kind of Everything that I just show, you can go and run it and do it yourself uh, on this sample game. Um, and hopefully the same way the two sample games before helped a lot of people get started or play around or get into soccer analytics, these ones will help people. This game will help people get into data-driven video analysis. Still, we wait, wait for the open, open data project, which is going to come eventually at some point. I promise. Somehow, we are going to make, make that happen. All right. Thank you. Uh, 
I, as somebody who's uh, had students definitely working with your your data, I thought that was a wonderful <laughs> note to end on that you're releasing even more and to combine it with one of the people in chat also to say thank you. Um, but yeah, and so thank you for uh, the talk. And then if we'd like to, I feel like, so the most quiet of us has been uh, Suds. <laughs> As usual. So I feel like we need to, <laughs> unlike David's uh, iPad of questions last time, I have a notebook of, I'm still very old school. I use a notebook of questions this time, but I will let others ask theirs first. Um, no, I, I don't mind going. Uh, Bruno, thank you for the, converse, uh, the conversation. Honestly, I think out of all of the friends of tracking videos that we have, this one was probably my favorite. Um, it's the most practical, mm-hmm. most impactful. Um, mm-hmm. And it shows exactly what is the reality. Um, maybe uh, it's not really a question, but maybe you can speak through. I do have one question. The question is, do you think event data like Opta stats bomb will become obsolete at some point? Because the, um, we'll be able to learn the game through proper player tracking and ball tracking. That's just a question for the future future. Um, and uh, more of like, if you could talk through this, is um, do you necessarily need to have player and ball identification to be able to do a lot of these things? Or what is more or less like the different tiers of player tracking in which you might be able to produce value? Because um, as you were saying, start with start simple and then start iterating. Um, I found to be able to create value, even if I didn't know who my opponent players were, and even if I didn't know who my own players were, um, Mm -hmm. you do things about team blocks you can still do things about how many people are open in between lines um Mm -hmm. do things about how how much are you stretching the game or or shrinking the game um and maybe can you speak about uh the difficulties of player identification ball identification and kind of give a word of hey it's okay if you don't have these things you can still do a lot with it uh, I think you just answer your own question because you're doing a lot already. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, so, things. so, uh, so um, yeah, about, about your first first question about whether um, Opta event data or uh, Salesform data will become obsolete. I think, in a way, because I doubt, um, like if you if you look at the, what Stab, Statsform did with uh, Statsform 360, which I think is a super smart and super useful iteration of, of, of their previous data, which was already an iteration uh, of the traditional kind of Opta data. And um, I think that they just things evolve. So um, I, I, it's always going to be a stats from data or a skills corner data or metric sports data or um, things, which I think is probably a conversion to the middle before it was a kind of only events and tracking. And now you have events with some tracking and then you have tracking, but without identities. And basically it's kind of covering the whole spectrum of possible data sources and which I think is it's really good news in terms of, of affordability um, because uh, uh, it means uh, uh, for all levels of the game there will be some type of data available that they can do some type of analysis and it's probably going to be a convert so if you have events data traditional events data here tracking data tracking data here the whole spectrum is going to be covered, but also this one's probably going to be kind of getting closer. So it's going to be the, the, the bottom is going to go up, up, up until like, I'm pretty sure one day you have kind of automated tracking data and event data from any video feed. I'm not saying this is close, but it will happen. Um, so I'm super excited to see all these kind of uh, uh, developments in the, in, the, in the field of data because it means more people has, have access to more and they can do more. And then to your, own quest, to your second question, I think there, there's a lot that can be done uh, without identities. Uh, um, I think there is there is there is a very exciting space that yes, requires well, one, identities. One, one quick yeah. one quick uh, sure. thing. Can you also maybe speak about in your experience what is the quality of uh, video required to be able to at least identify players? Sorry, I forgot. To... Um, yeah, um, I don't think it's, it's that much about um, so. There are two ways to solve that problem. One is with more cameras, which is the solution some companies are taking. They have like 18 cameras, so there's always one from which you see the number on the shirt, on the t-shirt. Um, but then there's also creating models kind of uh, around like how the players are dressed, etc. I think 
uh, or the, the the peculiarities of each player. And I think you can do that with with you need at least 1080p kind of 1080 video to kind of be able to do that. But it's still like I don't I'm not aware of any models that you give uh, even if, if you give 4K from a single camera today they can do player identification frame by frame. So it's more I think a problem not of the video resolution but of the technology that that does the identification. I'm supposed to. This is this is my first time being the, the main host, so I was supposed to. If it, if it got quiet, I was supposed to say something. Love <laughs> 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 it. But That's I will let it. <laughs> Do you want me to ask some of the questions from the chat, uh, Catherine? Will I yeah, throw in a few there? Um, right. So the what, the first question that came up was releasing more data. You <laughs> addressed that. Um, yeah. Very nice that you've got this. Thing. But if I remember rightly, you were trying to do some project where you were trying to get a club or maybe a sort of um, a lower league club to provide um, a season's worth yeah. of data or something like that. Did anything, did you manage to succeed with any of that? Um, that Not so far. Okay. Mainly because lawyers. Yeah, um, because that's what I, yeah, that's what I thought. That's one of the problems that we've had. Yeah. Yeah. We, we so, very much, yeah. I mean, we'd very yeah. much like to do something like that, but then you've got to pay all the lawyers in case you get sued by the players later for GDPR in Europe anyway. Yeah, so it's um, it's been... So we had, I mean, we had several conversations where things look really promising that were like, oh yeah, we really want to do this. I think it's would be really good, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then like kind of, we send the data sharing agreement and then things were like, silent for one week two weeks <laughs> a month two months and then like yeah now we talk i talk with people i mean we can do it etc cetera, etc cetera. no one wants to take the risk i think mm. um but but I, i'm committed to doing it so um uh, hopefully this year we can we can make it happen uh and we have some ideas i i, I don't want to talk about it too much uh, the details but we want to make it happen and we so our, our original idea was to that someone with uh, enough power and enough kind of uh, or maybe ownership of the tv bytes or the data um would do it we we're hoping like my, my 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 ideal scenario would be to get the nwsl to to do it mm. um and i i knew i know they were doing some partnerships with with twitch and i thought okay this could be like the perfect because it's kind of um it could even be beneficial for them as kind of advertisements or awareness of the league and the data community or in general. Uh, but I could never got to talk with, I never, I could never get to talk with people kind of in a high enough uh, seat at the table to kind of make it happen. Um, so yeah, of course, when, when we started, people said like, it's, it's impossible and I agree, but we have some ideas to kind of work around the, the, those issues. But if anyone is listening and is, and is in any position of uh, of power or uh, at this leverage or can get us at the, at the table with people that can actually make this happen, what we want to do is get all the data from one league or, or the later, or all the data, for example, for the World Cup or for the Women's World Cup um, and do the tracking and event data for those games and make it available together with the videos and so that anyone can use it to... Uh, explore and play around and develop new and better ways to analyze data mm. if anyone is interested and is listening and is interested i'm uh, i'm uh, open for conversation yeah also maybe if you're a sports lawyer or something like that who would be willing to work for free to sort out all of those <laughs> details so if you're a sports yeah. lawyer in sweden then contact me and yeah. we'll see yeah. um so what I, else did i have um so can so can people can people use your product to, for example, load in their favorite, um, if they get a feed from the Champions League, can they mm -hmm. load in their favorite team, use it to track it, and then start playing around with that? Um, yeah, so uh, we have this the automated tracking data, that this mm. data that gives you the information about the players of each team without identities, that you can run it on any video, um, and any video it's it's in beta testing so it's not really open to everyone so if you go to cloud you will see the option to do automated tracking data as we call it and it's okay. blocked uh, but if you if you want to kind of play around with that you can write me on twitter uh, or send me an email and we can make that happen but the answer is yes it's, okay. it's not for everyone but yes 
So that's a thang gag ask that question. So get in contact and, uh, and do that. And then uh, yeah, that's also, I think that's an option also for a few few people have master's theses um, who they were interested, which they were interested in doing. And that might be another possibility to do it. Of course, a small, a small disclaimer, of course, that processing has a cost. So it's not that, <laughs> it's not that, yeah, sure. Send me as many views as you want and we are gonna process them. That 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 is what the open data project is hopefully we'll cover, but still we can always kind of do it on a kind of, you can always find me and we can, we're going to have a look. Okay. Can I, I, I want to throw in one of my questions if that's okay with everyone. Um, so I was wondering how much you've been seeing um, your, the tracking data used for strategy versus just kind of evaluation and so on. Um, a strategy you mean to make decisions about how to play the next games versus yeah. um, I'm not super I'm, I'm not like most of these things uh, I kind of have an idea of what clubs do but I don't really know what they do because uh, so I would say yes but I'm not super sure about it maybe David or Suits are in a better position to answer that one yeah we'll make Suds answer that <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I think the best way to answer it without answering it <laughs> is um, what Bruno said. Um, I think in the future, clubs are doing it now, but then in the future, within one season, you'll see a spike of more clubs being able to do this, is um, understanding from the club or whoever the coach is or whomever, what is the game model? What are the uh, different aspects of the game, whether it's counterattack, whether it's building up with three in the back, building up from two in the back, and uh, creating effectively a video repository or a video library um, where people could sift through information really quickly. And um, data, data science or data analytics uh, provides like a layer of three bullet points, four bullet points of here are the things that we've learned about the efficiency of building out from three in the back, the efficiency of building out with two in the back. Um, how good are we able, how, how well are we able to break press when people are pressing us at a certain velocity? Um, and these sorts of questions, they uh, will be given to the right people. And I can't say what that. <laughs> See what I mean with clubs and telling. <laughs> I've gotten in, I've gotten in trouble before, so that's why. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I think what we're seeing is is more and more data being put into teams' game plans. So they have a game plan which is very visual and very verbal. Um, and I mean, I think you know you're talking about developments of these things. I think it's only within the last sort of five and ten years that teams that you have these managers who have a proper game plan for their games you know i mean it, it tactics is a, is a reasonably recent thing like more advanced tactics and so managers are starting to have very clear game plans and style of play and now they're thinking well how can i put data into that as well yeah just just to what david is saying i think tactics tactics maybe have been there for a very long time but operationalizing the definition into something that you can codify or put behind kpis that is what we're seeing a huge explosiveness around which then you can use code ball or something to then break it down and organize it all so i wasn't laughing i was i was laughing at something that came in the chat somebody of course wants a job at the fake cup <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah, there are any entry level positions yes <laughs> it's not one of your students is it Katya I don't know it's not one of my <laughs> students but I also think my students I, I don't know if I should, my students seem to be actually of, of quite high demand my students are phenomenal I, I anticipate them being the lead analyst somewhere at some point <laughs> in the entry level position. Um, Can I ask you some more basic questions? There's a few sort of amateur people probably thinking about their own teams and so on. And they were wondering what's the sort of minimum thing they need? What, what in fact, I mean, what they asked, was it just a GoPro camera that you started your first thing with? And what would be the minimum setup to play around with it for your division 17? Um, or even your Sunday league team? 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, when we started, it was two GoPros, uh, and I think the the stitching of that clip or that game, so the the put, merging like the two GoPros together took like 48 hours, something like that. And I had to use a computer at work. I had uh, at the at the at the lab that was powerful enough. So a lot of that changed. Um, I think now with 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 a with a GoPro or with yeah with with any camera you can do it. Uh, our so our kind of uh, for example um, automatic tracking data at the moment is only available in our paid tiers, which start at like fifteen hundred per year. Uh, so that of course is not affordable for the Sunday League, but we are working on something for the second half of the year that should make it much more accessible, even at that level. Uh, maybe not the full game because it is much more expensive, but maybe you have some clips that you want to analyze or some clips that you want to look at or some moments of the game that you want to uh, analyze. Uh, and that I think will be possible at all levels of the game, hopefully by the end of the year, which is something that, are, that again, we are super excited about compared to uh, data providers in general, you, you they cover certain leaks, right? Um, and the, the, this, this is the, maybe there are 50 leaks, which is a lot of leaks, but they are not really covering like thousands and thousands of games that happen each weekend. And we had, we had, we are really excited about our approach is that eventually it would allow those people as well to just capture data for their own games and get around playing with their own data, which is what we wanted when we started Metric Sports. Mm. But we one are not related there yet. Que one related question was, could you do it on a multi-sports field? So if you've got a field that's marked out for other sports, can you get your thing right? <laughs> yeah, no, the, the models get all, all confused. Okay. Uh, actually, yeah. we have we have one... Um, but it, I, I always say it depends in, because all these models, uh, computer vision models are a bit like black boxes and kind of you give the input, you get the output uh, and sometimes they behave in unexpected ways. Uh, but as, as kind of a rule of thumb, if there are like many lines on the field, like you, you have the NFL and the, I don't know, the or you have rugby and football in the same pitch and etc. it's probably not going to work. At least mm -hmm. not going to work as well. Same for training grounds. Sometimes training grounds you have a lot of extra lines painted and kind of the, the models get confused, etc. Mm. We have one team use uh, filled with red lines instead of whites uh, and yellow grass instead of green <laughs> and nothing works. <laughs> so, yeah. And the question came in from Rodrigo Salvador, who's one of our regular watchers and organizers, the Slack group as well. He wants yeah. to know about the situation in Argentina, like specifically What's going on in Argentina with analytics, and um, is there a, is there any growth? Is it a big thing? Uh, I think it's super early days here. I think in terms of budget and disposition and investment uh, and awareness in general, I think it's very early days here. Mm. Uh, from from what I see from our clients, uh, this bit more in Brazil seems to be quite a bit more into it. Okay. Uh, um, Mexico as well, but here in Argentina, I think it's very early days, which if Rodrigo, you're from Argentina means yeah, it's a big opportunity for you at some point, if you're patient, but it is, I think it's, he's from I, Brazil. So. <laughs> ah, he's from Brazil. Ah, okay. Okay. Even, even better for him. Even better for him. Uh, I think Brazil is a bit more kind of uh, advanced and Argentina is, I think it's, I think it's mainly a reason of a question of budget. I, I, I think, the, I think there are a lot of, I'm not also a specialist in this issue, so I might get completely, completely wrong, but I think there are a lot of co coaches like really uh, with a uh, um, kind of fresh understanding of the game and of the technology, et cetera, but it's more a budget, budgetary and uh, budgetary. I don't think that's a word. Is it more a budget issue than, than, a, than a willingness to do it? There's a few people asking about the slack group I, I will just share that um that link to the slack group there so you can anyone who wants to just can join um because there is and there's a very active south south americans in particular are very active on the on the slack group uh, so nice yeah. quick uh, quick question bruno um yep. is, this every, is everything here just for matches or is it uh also for training as well yeah you can you can uh you can you can use it for training for the training run as well it's also one of the things I like about the automated tracking data approach uh, is that yeah, you just upload your videos, you get your data and you can run it in trainings, you can run it in uh, 
games uh, of the of leaks that are not covered by your uh, standard data provider, etc. I think there, there. I don't think this replaces the. So Met, at Metrica, we provide data and tracking and event data. Now this automated tracking data, but uh, we don't consider ourselves data providers in the sense that Statsbomb or Opta are data providers. Um, uh, so we don't cover, uh, or not, are not, are not, are not planning to cover like many leaks and provide data for all those leaks. But what we are, our approach is to provide you tools so that you can get data for any game you want, uh, especially if they are not covered by by the other kind of standard data providers. So there was a question earlier about how accurate uh, velocities and so on of players are that can be taken off of the data. Um, this is something we, that we are working on at the moment. Um, uh, uh, I think we have clients using the data that comes from this kind of uh, uh, video footage to analyze uh, players for scouting. And you have to do some cleanup of the data, removing outliers, etc. Uh, but it's definitely doable. And uh, uh, so I'm, I, I can't speak about accuracy because we haven't done a kind of uh, comparison against a benchmark, etc. So I could tell you a number, but I will be lying. So uh, I would just uh, leave it at saying that there are clubs that are using it professionally to scout players and to evaluate the performance of the players. So uh, it's at least it's at least for them, which are like really good teams and, um, and clubs is good enough. So many interesting questions in the chat just now, actually. I mean, there was a question about the state in, in um, Africa, if um, this there's being anything used there. And also then following up from that is like scouting in Africa, um, if data is used in, in those situations. Do you, do you know anything about that, Bruno? No idea. Okay. Uh, no, no, no idea. I know we have clients in Africa <laughs> and a lot of users of the of play, both pay and pay and free. Mm. Um, so there's definitely an, an interest there, but about scouting in Africa, I have no idea. Mm. Um, whoa, <laughs> okay. Um, do you, what about the, the, this is maybe one for suds actually, the level playing field should should the leagues create a level playing field for analytics? So I know, for example, the NBA have a very level playing field is that they just basically have an infrastructure. They have a level playing field in terms of data and um, what you've got access to, and then they compete in terms of signing the best data scientists. What do you think, Suds? Do you think that should be the way to go? Um... The, M the MLS uh, also has something very similar too through the partnership with Second Spectrum. Um, I think if money is involved, if, if there's enough money on the table, then yeah, I think creating a like a creating a league-wide deal um, can happen, uh, regardless of what teams might think about it. I do remember um, when Ajax and PSV were mentioning this uh, maybe a couple of years ago when they were creating their league-wide deal. They needed to do kind of like a door-to-door uh, -door effort and speaking to all of the clubs to try to get them to understand that, no, if we do have a league-wide deal, it won't just be Ajax PSV having the competitive advantage, but uh, we can create this in a way where all teams can benefit from. I think the biggest, um, the biggest fear that any, that any league has, whether it's soccer or a different sport, is that it'll only really benefit the clubs that have the resources to hire a data scientist to work with the information. Um, and when, especially when it comes to tracking data, the, the skill sets um, and the, the, four, the four points that Bruno's already mentioned, um, the more resource clubs will definitely be able to, be, to act on their impulses uh, first. So um, if there is potentially a league-wide deal, convincing clubs that everyone can actually benefit from it. And whether that's maybe even um, video sharing, video clip sharing, uh, making the process of opposition analysis a bit more streamlined and a bit more level and equal, then I think you can maybe get buy-in. If you can't, then I always have the feeling that teams might always say, ah, okay, in, in our case, um, Bitvika, Porto Sporting, they'll have the resources, Braga, they'll have the resources to do it and then no one else will. And then in 
we want to make it more competitive, not <laughs> create more of a more of a gap. Well, there's so many questions, and then the question is: I feel like I have to i i i, I should uh, consult the uh, more uh, who, who people who've had this role much longer than me in terms of when. Do we have to, do we do we do we decide now that we have to make this uh, amazing uh, session come to an end because it's been an hour and a half? Yeah, um, I think I think we do. We we sort of we we make an exception when Javier is here because he can just speak nonstop for twenty minutes without anyone being able to interrupt him. So <laughs> then we then we sometimes go for two hours, but normally we have a we have an hour and a half um, as our kind of of limit so that we all stay sane. <laughs> so then, so then we definitely we need to uh, we need to thank Bruno and Suds for coming in. This has been amazing. Uh, I feel like also in in talking with various different analysts, there's one common thread of um, that you know <laughs> among all analysts, which is so which comes into play here also, which is that we have to thank Devin who actually introduced. Uh, um, introduced Bruno to, to me to bring him in here since this has been such an amazing talk. Um, everybody always has to be grateful to Devin for all he does. Um, and then, so I wanted to really quickly say, so if, if you are new to Friends of Tracking, there's tons of, you can see there are tons of videos on this um, channel that are of a variety of different types. Some are more like this and some are more coming from a, from uh, David Sumter's uh, course and, and so on. So there's a lot of educational content, a lot of different um, top analysts that you, you're gonna, you could hear speak and so on. Um, and so then we very much would like for you to subscribe and like <laughs> so that as we grow even more, we're gonna actually be able to have even more opportunities and maybe have contests and things like that. So you can be a part of this <laughs> and make us even bigger and better. Um, so don't forget. Uh, and thank you again, everyone. It's been if I if I I have one thing I want to say before uh, before we uh, wrap up, as I recorded a demo video of how to use Codeball with the samples uh, game number three, so that you can load it into play and you can use kind of the whole workflow. I have the link here. I don't know uh, what are the wh where's the best play to share it with the people that kind of. Uh, uh, Ooh, can, we, can we put it up on the channel? Or is it just is it on the Metrica site? Is it or uh, do you want? No, to... it's, yeah, it's a it's a Loom. It's kind of a platform for uh, okay. if you if you want we can we can record like a much better. And this one's kind of all like done quickly before this this call, so well, we I can do a better one for, for the... having you record a, a yeah video sure for us as sure, well. Sure. But in the better. meantime, it would be good to share yeah. this link <laughs> with people so that they can uh, kind of get they can go and test it now. So I don't know if you guys can share it on the chat. I'm not on the yeah. I'll uh, share I'll share it on the chat. Okay, That's really good. Cool. Yeah. Um, uh, and yes, so just wanted to say thank you. Um, since because since since it's live, I, I I don't know when you're gonna kind of hit the stop button. And then I wanted to say before you do that that um, uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, being here today, um, and I uh, I want to kind of highlight especially how important this Friends of Struggle initiative and everyone that has contributed to it has been. Mm. Uh, for me, at, at Metrica it has pushed us. I mentioned this in the past, but. Uh, the two games we released them we always wanted to do and we never got around to do it and the friends of struggling kind of was initiated the reason to do it and now the same thing with the sample game number three and hopefully the open data project is also part of all the things uh, that has been kind of catalyzed by this movement uh, in general not, not only here but by the community in general so i'm super excited about uh, the future as well so thank you for having me and for creating the space as well uh, can i just say one thing before i do, let catherine do a final you're so good at the subscribe thing, Catherine. It's really good. So I'm going to let you say the final, the yeah. final goodbye. But um, I, well, I wanted to say, Bruno, because I, I was really struck by both your modesty uh, about what you've, you've done. And I thought that was really nice because you did mention there's other people doing this and your, your sort of generosity to helping the field. So I, I just really wanted to appreciate that as well as all the technical stuff that you've gone into and the, the things you've done. So just thank you really for right. supporting it as a field rather than just an idea for, for making money. I think that's just fantastic. Right. Well, much appreciated, thank you. Yeah, so that's kind of 
a, a wonderful note to end on and is related again to the fact that this channel has been something that's been this great, um, you know, there are so many soccer analysts and people contributing in some way or another that have been very open to helping contribute to the field growing of, of soccer analytics. Um, and, you know, so, and, and we've been lucky, well, before I was part of this, uh, everybody was lucky to have all the a lot of these people talk and so on and so um, it, it's a great note to end on then thank you to Bruno as well as to you know to everybody else who has been making all of this you know available and so generous um, to help soccer analytics grow um, so subscribe and like since now I've been told I have to say that <laughs> yeah, you don't have the button to press the I, I yes I'm going to press I meant to press the end stream button so I will I will do that now <laughs> okay bye-bye cheers cool I have pressed the end stream button